I'm Padmini Melacharu, the lead specialist for cryogenic and compressed gas fuels in LR. So my role is basically focused on hydrogen systems. I have more than 7 years of experience in dealing with cryogenics coming from space industry. Hydrogen has been used as fuel for several decades in other industries like space industry, automotive is also catching up. It's probably one of the cleanest and greenest fuels that is actually a viable option to be used in shipping. Yes, I think hydrogen uh, as an energy carrier using fuel cell is already a viable way of generating energy from it. And there have already been several projects uh, already uh, which are already being built uh, and new projects coming up in uh, feasibility study phase which are using fuel cells as uh, energy source. There's also other ways of having hydrogen used as energy carrier. One is uh, combustion engines. So there could be dual fuel engines uh, where it is used along with LNG as a start of fuel or it could go to gas turbine engines which are being built up now to use hydrogen as an energy carrier. One of the bigger challenges with hydrogen is material selection. Hydrogen is very prone for a property called hydrogen embrittlement. Hydrogen can be absorbed into the surface of the metals. For some of the metals, it can go right through the metal surface and for some of them, it will go through when there are any defects on the surface like cracks, etc. It causes localized brittle nature in the material. So even if the material is ductile to begin with, it will then become brittle because hydrogen is sitting in the interstitial spaces. So hydrogen will sit in between them and sometimes it causes hydrides. Sometimes it's called hydrogen attack when it happens at high temperature. All of this comes under the umbrella of embrittlement. So this prevents some of the common materials like cast iron, ductile iron, which is a general and very common material to be used in shipping industry to be used for hydrogen. So this is one of the bigger challenges uh, when it comes to material selection in uh, gaseous hydrogen or even compressed hydrogen at high pressures. Another challenge with liquid hydrogen is that liquid hydrogen is at minus 253 degrees centigrade. Most of the metals which are ductile at room temperature, they can become brittle at this low temperature. So there is this property called ductile to brittle transition. As the temperature reduces, the ductility keeps reducing and it will become brittle. So these are the bigger challenges with metals when it comes to hydrogen. And for polymers or other elastomers, the, one of the bigger challenges is permeation. So hydrogen being a very small molecule, it can actually pass through the membranes or any of the composite structures and it will then be a combustion hazard. So that is one of the challenges with uh, polymer substances. Hydrogen has very high energy density, but the challenge with hydrogen is it doesn't have much of volumetric density. So if you compare it with conventional fuels like marine gas oil, even compressed hydrogen to the level of 700 bar, it will be around 8 times less than marine uh, gas oil. And if you compare it with LNG, it will be 4 times less. And one of the best ways to store energy in hydrogen is through liquefying it. But even then, liquid hydrogen itself will have half the energy content of liquid natural gas. So what this means is on the infrastructure, the storage of hydrogen should be twice that of LNG. So this reduces usable space and it also increases the weight of uh, the structures, etc. So one of the bigger risks with hydrogen is uh, flammability. So hydrogen is a very small molecule. So it can pass through many of the joints. So conventional flange joints or threaded joints, which are actually leak tight for heavier gases like nitrogen. And then it can accumulate at high spots and cause ignition. Also, the minimum ignition energy required for hydrogen is very less. So something as small as static in electricity in the environment is sufficient to ignite hydrogen. The flame of hydrogen is sometimes not visible to naked eye. Hydrogen burns in UV wavelength. Most of the flame detectors are generally suited for IR wavelength. So the sensors to detect hydrogen also should be tuned to that wavelength so that it can catch the flame. And sometimes we may not even feel the heat from hydrogen flame to be able to detect that hydrogen is actually burning in the vicinity. The flame can be to the length of uh, several meters. So if there is a hydrogen system, we cannot have any other auxiliary systems within the zone in which jet flames can travel. So we need to be very careful about hydrogen fires. Once hydrogen starts burning, the only sure shot way to stop hydrogen fire is to cut off the supply. So for these reasons, it's always better to prevent hydrogen from leaking or having any fire rather than to think of firefighting measures. So our inherently safer designs for marine should start with 
preventing any uh, hazards from occurring so that means we need to go for welded joints we need to think of high seat leak tightness high workmanship to stop any of the hydrogen leaking we need to remove ignition sources and then the third thing is fire fighting so we cannot fight hydrogen fires with water etc and there are specific domains in which we need to start with hydrogen fires and it also has to be a quick action control and monitoring systems to detect hydrogen and then stop hydrogen fire fire fighting and then think of a safe means of uh, making people escape it's very difficult to evacuate people as easily as on land so that's why we need to think of uh, inherent safer methods and focus on them rather than going towards the fire fighting or or risk mitigation methods now there's a lot of talk going on about using lng for hydrogen but liquid hydrogen and liquid nitro and liquid natural gas are not the same even though both of them are cryogens there are fundamental differences in the properties including the temperature at which they are stored but that's not to say that it's not possible we need to clearly assess if such systems are suitable for liquid hydrogen in the first place so we need to think of material suitability the parent material composition manufacturing processes that were used on the original material like filler for weldings etc we need to assess whether they are compatible with hydrogen and also with liquid hydrogen being at low temperature and the second thing is the aging if a surface of material is prone for cracking etc so this makes a, even a compatible material uh, prone to hydrogen embrittlement lng even though it's a cryogen it's not at very low temperature whereas hydrogen is at minus 253 degree centigrade so for lng it's sometimes also possible to have no insulation or only a foam insulation just to prevent uh, lng from being boiled off whereas for hydrogen there is actually a safety or hazardous zone that happens when uh, liquid hydrogen is left over uh, without having insulation any hydrogen equipment when it comes into contact with air can actually freeze the air it will create environment called oxygen enriched environment and this causes a combustion hazard so these are the main things that we need to consider when thinking about converting lng systems for hydrogen systems already the industry is seeing real live projects of hydrogen coming up and in the future i expect that hydrogen is going to take up the a uh, very niche sector of either short or medium distance shipping and it uh, once the hydrogen economy booms in in medium term i expect that the hydrogen carriers will gain momentum to be seeing as one of the viable energy carriers across on the shipping industry